Turn up the radio and sing along. It's time for another great song. This is the Great Song Podcast. Seasons greetings and welcome once again to the Great Song Podcast. I'm Rob Alley. I am JP Mosier. And we're here to celebrate the greatest songs in modern music history. We're going to tell you what makes them great. Why we think they're awesome, and why you should too. J.P. Moser, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I just had a breakfast with my pastor, and I'm sporting this Kareem Abdul-Jabbar homemade t-shirt. No relation. No relation. Like, well, oh wait, there is going to be some tie-in, which re- which led us to the discussion of if you could go back and witness one sport event in history, any Super Bowl, any World Series, any NBA Finals, any hockey, whatever they have, Stanley Cup, what do you pick? And I'll tell mine while you think on okay, it. So okay. that'll give you a little time to think on it. I would go back to the 1987 Los Angeles Lakers NBA Finals run. That is my favorite sports team ever at the Forum with Magic Johnson, Byron Scott, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, A.C. Green, Michael Cooper. That's my that's my jam. I would go back to 87, go to the Forum, and watch the Finals. Where would you go, Rob? I got to think... Uh, oh god! Braves World Series. I was gonna say Braves World Series. I want to see. I would like to see the '95 Braves win the World Series. That doesn't quite feel historic enough. Sure. Like if you were given one choice, one shot. But like from my heart, that's the spot I would want to go sure. to. You know, otherwise, you guys I don't tell know. us out there where you would go. Yeah, who, let who us know. Would you go see Great Song Pod on Twitter? Uh, yeah, what's your? Don't say go back to Sunday and watch or this past. Well, I guess depending on when we drop it. Yeah. We I might drop it this week and see Tiger Woods win the PGA championship right. that he just won. But was, maybe Tiger Woods win the Masters the first there time. You go. Or or see Babe Ruth call his shot. That's money. Or right there. That'd be you know, Ali Frazier. Yeah. I don't know. And anyway, there's so many good choices. Yeah. In this wonderful life that we live. Because life has indeed been good to us, right? It has. So far. Anyway, so far, so far, tell them what we're talking about today in relation to music, not sports (laughs) T-shirts. We got a great song. I've been waiting since literally about week two of this podcast to do this song. I love it so much. And I know JP does as well. Uh, We're talking about Life's Been Good by Joe Walsh. Let's take a listen. Give a little gander. It has. No, oh, both of us. Life's been good to me, to you. Everything is beautiful. Oh, so far. So far. This song is so quirky and weird and interesting and yet truly, I mean, legitimately amazing. Like, this is one of the best, like, it's a well-written song all the way around. Really clever, really smart. Lyrically, musically, the Lyrically, whole gamut. musically. And then production wise just kicks it up to the stratosphere for me. Like there are not many more, if any, dare I say, 
better produced songs. There might be equally well produced songs, but the production on this song takes an already really, really, really good song and kicks amps it up. it up a notch. Yeah, amps it up just just right over the edge, puts it up to eleven. Um, this is from the 1978 album, but seriously, folks. Uh, it hit number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. That's the song, not the album. Uh, the album hit number eight, actually, um, from Joe Walsh, guitarist for the legendary band Eagles. That is not the Eagles, by the way. It is just, just Eagles. Eagles. If you look on their albums, it's not the Eagles. It's Eagles because they're pretentious. How about that? They're a little bit, they're a little, um, they're a little touchy about some things. <laughs> so don't be going around calling them. The Eagles. We They're, should start a band called The Eagles. The Eagles. Or something. Or even The Eagles. Or Some Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, Some Eagles. Uh, Mo Eagles. <laughs> Give me Mo Eagles. That's be yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Joe Walsh, guitarist uh, forever uh, with The Eagles, along with, excuse me, for Eagles. For Eagles. I just did it. I warned myself uh, already. Autopilot. Wow. Um, so, guitarist for Eagles, <laughs> along with <laughs> sounds funny. It just, I mean, it's like is uh, it the James Gang or is it just James Gang? No, it is the James Gang. Okay. Yes, uh, which is one of his his other well known projects. He's had a lot of success in absolutely in, in everything he does. He's had solo success, band success with Eagles, <laughs> and and band success with the James Gang, uh, which is another as as side projects go. That's probably one of the all time favorite side. Projects for me is the sure. James Gang for Joe Walsh, um, Funk Forty Nine, Walk Away, Walk Away, Midnight Man, such good stuff from the James Gang. He could have had a career. He could have had just a great career if you take Eagles, Eagles. <laughs> out of it entirely, right? Yeah. Just James yeah. Gang and Joe Walsh solo. That's solid. You know, what I'm talking about you're you're like um, borderline Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with just with solo those. stuff. And- yeah. But then, but then you add eagles into the mix. <laughs> and laugh every time it. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like trying not to say. Well, it's even weirder than trying not to say the Smashing Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. It's just Smashing Pumpkins. Sure, but eagles is just weirder to like because you can go out and smash pumpkins. Yeah, you can't go out and eagles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so here's what we're gonna do for the rest of the episode. Um, I'll have to remember to go back and post and edit this for the rest of the episode. If we reference Eagles, but we accidentally say the Eagles, then I'm going to bleep it. Like we swore. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. So it'll be like <laughs> bleeping Eagles. Yeah. That's funny. That's great. So anyway. Joe Walsh guitarist for the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to intentionally do it now. Yeah. Uh, so from the 1978 album, but seriously folks, I mean, it's about time. Let's seriously. bring it back. The B side of that on that single, the, the B side of that was boat weirdos. The theme boat, uh, the theme, theme boat, from boat weirdos. Theme from yeah. boat weirdos. That is a weird instrumental. Have you heard it? Yeah, I listened to it's it, I, and that is actually so. Part of the story of this album is that they did a sort of rehearsal slash recording session on a boat. They rented a they rented a boat and went out on it for like a week and rehearsed and and tightened up these songs, getting prepped to record them. And but the theme from boat weirdos is actually the actually came from the boat recordings yeah. on the boat. So everything else they came back and recorded in a studio, but, um, but the producer said that one stuck and they, they just kept it. It's very strange. I like secondhand store on that album. Yeah. I like that song. That's, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, my next favorite. Good song. solid album. If you've never seen the album cover, we were talking about this earlier. We're hold, holding it up in the air. I'm it's, thrusting it in the air. It's kind those. of a precursor to Nirvana's nevermind. Uh, it's Joe Walsh being weird in a pool. And uh, the uh, the front cover has him sitting, uh, sitting really at the bottom of a pool underwater. Uh, and he there's a table that food is floating up from. He's I don't know some how mean they really, aviator glasses. I think maybe they put everything down there with like a cover on it, and then release the cover and let the stuff float up. But he's like just sitting in a chair at a like patio table in the bottom of a pool wearing sunglasses. Yeah, wearing aviators, and he's got a he's got a whole. I, there's a lobster in there. Uh, yeah. There's bread rolls. There's a donut, a wine bottle. I think your corn typical on the cob. picnic blanket cover. The yeah, red the, and white the classic checker, checkerboard. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So you know from the get-go, this is going to be kind of an offbeat experience sure. with this album. Um, and uh, even at the end of the song, there's a... Um, on the album version, not they don't play this on the radio, but so this is first of all, this is a long song. Absolutely, uh, this is a what eight minutes, eight eight minutes and four seconds, I think it is. The original single when it was released was cut down to four thirty five. Um, that takes a lot of the guts out of it there. Yeah, I mean, and I, so fortunately, we grew up in an era when I don't remember hearing the short version. Sure. I, I only remember now this play, gets played on classic rock stations and they play the full eight minute version. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't have a memory of, and I didn't want to go back and try sure. and find the shortened version. I didn't want to hear yeah, it. I, it. I don't know what they cut out. Like I it would have just messed me up. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, the version you hear on the radio now is eight minutes and four seconds. The original was cut down to four thirty five. The full track is actually eight fifty seven, almost nine minutes, uh, and it has kind of a goofy epilogue slash comedy sketch at the end about a flock of wahwahs. <laughs> and um, if you think of um, when I read it, I had never heard the flock of wahwahs because I just listened to the single version. But the so I thought it was a flock of wawas because I was reading it and I thought mm -hmm. it was going to be like a joke about wah pedals. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really not. It's really like if if you, if you think the penguin from the old Batman TV show, <laughs> it's more <laughs> like good. that. It's like a flock. Why don't we just play it so everybody can kind of get a, a a little um a little intro to the to the flock of wawas? Hang on. This is af as the song is fading out. You get you get this great bit of wisdom from Joe Walsh. Uh oh. Here comes a flock of wahwahs. So, um, can't imagine why they didn't play that on the radio, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, sometimes when you go out and rehearse on a boat for a week <laughs> and you're and the drugs are flowing like wine, uh, that you come out with something like that on your album, I guess. Uh, flock of wham -wass. but that well, the funny thing is. That's totally in character that, for Joe, Joe Walsh. Walsh. That's Joe That's it. helmet cam Joe Walsh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put that. He's just a, an offbeat, weird dude um, who makes amazing music. Sure. Uh, Joe Walsh is not your typical guitar hero. You yeah, know what you I'm saying? Yeah, you don't really think of him up there. Uh, we do. Like, we do. But if you poll popular music, they're not going to think of him as... Yeah. I hate to use this term, but guitar god, like that's yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of yeah, absolutely right. He's not Eddie Van Halen, sure. Um, he's not you know Steve Vai. He's not uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, he's not <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. He's not even like a um, um, what's the guy from Bon Jovi? Um, Richie Sambora. Richie Sambora. Yeah, you know, but he's got his own niche in classic rock, and he's and he's got some of the most memorable guitar solo work ever he plays with other good guitar players yeah. i think and i think for somebody that's out front and as wild and as obnoxious he's kind of a classy other guitar guy mm. like he doesn't step on he the plays other well with others he plays well with others for somebody Literally. that's so like weird and <laughs> you know out front do my thing when it's not his time he'll play some chords yeah you know and play some chords nice yeah so it's true. He's got uh, like he he just has a unique I imagine he has a unique way of looking at the world. Sure. But I don't know him personally, but he's definitely got a unique way of approaching guitar playing and and artistry and the instrument, even just the like I think of little stuff he does like on the intro to the um, or not the intro, but it's at the end of his guitar solo on the. Um, the Eagles version of Hotel California, the live version of Hotel California. He's playing this, you know, acoustic, whatever. And he does this. I don't know if you've ever seen the video, but he he rakes the guitar strings down and then back up and does this like harp arpeggio thing that's insane sounding and even more insane looking. It's like he his hand rotates in this really weird way and he's got big long fingers 
and but it's just who would think to do that? Let me play because it sounds amazing. Let me play. Let me find it real quick and just hear this. Normal people don't think like this. So weird, like I like gorgeous, beautiful, but very just different. You know what I mean? He's just mm-hmm. a different dude. He plays with it. He he hits a lot of like harmonics while he's playing and just does things stuff that sounds like should be a mistake but it's intentional intentional yeah. mistakes there's exactly i put it in my notes i i put that he has uh he has kind of a purposeful sloppiness to mm-hmm. his playing like it's a very particular sloppiness yeah. it's it's not sloppy it's just him but it's a sort of like it's very casual sounding the way that he plays and approaches, you know what I mean? I wonder, I didn't study much on his training, but I wonder how trained he is musically if he's like intentionally not trained, uh-huh. but does what he thinks sounds cool. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. He's just got a, I don't really even know how to explain it, but it, that, the way you put it was really good. Um, so yeah, he's, he, he's like a, he's got this measured casual whatever but it's straight it's rock and roll it's really smart we like you joe walsh thanks for listening thanks for playing ingenious out of the box musical ideas very cool this is also this debuted on the fm movie soundtrack did you know that no i don't even think i know what that is we've talked about that movie fm fm yeah it's uh debuted on that so weird yeah i thought we've talked about that before i probably have but you know it's one of those that we need to see life's been good yeah so far yeah, you want to talk a little bit about the album? You got anything on the album? A little bit. I, mean, I talked a little bit about that weird instrumental. I like Secondhand yeah. Store. Um, I, we talked about the cover. Yeah. Um, that's that's actually pretty much all I've got on the album. <laughs> okay. So I guess I didn't really have that much. All right, um, well. I got to meet the band section. Let's do it. Let's, let's meet the band. Let's go ahead and meet the band. Hey, let's meet the band. It's time to meet the band. Hey, mama, let's meet the band. Let's all. All right, we're going to meet the band uh, that played on the Joe Walsh, but seriously, folks, album. Um, I'm a, I, I guess I'll start with Joe Walsh. Guitar, vocals, synth, and keys. Um, the aforementioned was in the James Gang, Barnstorm, Eagles, the Party Boys, um, which is a cool group, and Ringo. The Party Boys. That sounds like a that sounds like an '80s early wrestling. Rap group. I think it's a wrestling. Oh, sounds yeah, like a oh wrestling yeah, thing. true yeah. Rap group. Yeah, that yeah. could be a rap group. Um, Ringo Starr's All Star Band. I actually saw him play with Ringo Starr. Um, that That's was, cool. That was pretty cool. He was a, a great, great guest with them. Um, he was in the James Gang till '72. Funk Forty Nine Walk Away. We talked about. They hit it big. Their first big gig was they opened for Cream in '68. Oh, uh, what and, a show that would have been! I know, right? How James Gang and Cream? Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Barnstorm was his next group. Uh, Joe Vitale on drums. They have a song uh, in that Barnstorm group called Roller Coaster Weekend that is awesome because it's got solos by Joe Walsh, obviously, Rick Derringer, and Phil Keggy. Oh, solid. How's that for a trio of solos? Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's pretty money. Um, on bass, Kenny Pessa. Really? He wrote Rocky Mountain Way. Really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Oh, so, another great one. We could have easily done an episode on that, Rocky Mountain Way. That was our, uh, our plan B if we didn't do this one. We yeah. could do uh, Rocky Mountain Way. Then uh, Joe Walsh went with... Eagles uh, from 75 <laughs> to 80. Um, first album with them was Hotel California. So that's a great way to break out the gates. I was going to say. So Welcome to the group. Yeah. He, so he's pretty much uh, responsible for their success. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Think you can add something to us? How about this? Yeah. Boom. What's, can you think of, and this is totally off the cuff. Sure. Can you think of other artists who they added one member and then their next album was their breakout? Like immediately for me, I, now I know like purists probably would not say this was their breakout, but to me it's their like magnum opus. Dream Theater, when okay. they added Jordan Rudis on keyboards, their next album was Metropolis Part Two, which is the which is that's their, oh that's my favorite. Like yeah, it's, oh, it's they like you know, um, but I, I'm sure there's other bands out there, but it's it's always interesting to go. So what would Hotel California have been like? The album. The success, and not to knock you, Derek Sheridan, you no 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 oh, Derek Sheridan, please good and, chops. Yeah, yeah, but I'm with Rob. I think really and that the Mike addition. Moore, right? Original keyboardist, like original original oh, wow. keyboardist. Mike yeah, Moore, you're, you're yeah. better than me for knowing that. Um, yeah. yeah, and and I think it's kind of funny that you mentioned that their songs were just the best on that album, on that Dream yeah, Theater. Yeah, album. amazing album. So, anyway, sorry, side side note: listen to uh, Metropolis, Metropolis Part, Part two, two: Scenes from a Memory by Dream Theater. It's mind blowing. Pick up the DVD and watch it if you want to have some some good hours of fun. Um, back to Joe Walsh. 
what do you think his best riff with the Eagles is? Um, with Eagles, I'm uh, 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 but believe uh, I'm gonna. I'll tell mine. Okay, yeah. Go. Life in the fast lane. Me too. Ah, yeah. Look at that. We agree. Digital about, high five to right. everyone listening. Slapping hands. Do y'all yeah. like life in the fast lane out there? My favorite thing about it is that he plays the same riff in a different rhythmic place. And it makes it feel different. Sure. So the second time around, he goes, da 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 Then he plays almost the same riff. da 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 And then, da 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 It's the same riff four times, but it's in three different places over the course of those four times. And it's really interesting. That's so neat. That's so neat. And it was funny that we're talking about the pauses and the space and the patience, because he actually has some of that in this song. Yeah. It's like, there's just gaps. It's like, yeah. Like, the restraint. Yeah, the restraint of the drums that we listened to on the first, you know, Come. And that's, <laughs> like i mean that's really and that's a, just another element of the production like sure. i don't know whose call that was but there's every centimeter every uh iota of production was thought about on this song so this is what i'm saying he puts off this sloppy vibe but this production is so meticulous. You know what I'm saying? Everything about it is down to the wire. So like he projects casual, sloppy, even like... Not even going to tuck in my shirt. Yeah, yeah e- like, even like, uh, you know, maybe a little like slow. You sure, know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah. Like he's just not quite caught up. He put That's the vibe he puts out. But don't be fooled. Sure. The guy's got brilliant chops as far as music absolutely yeah absolutely you think he's gonna come over and y'all are gonna talk about i don't know you just think he's blazed all the time yeah which to be fair he was for a good portion but he could probably hold a hour conversation on quantum physics or something like that (laughs) exactly yeah Um, back to back to joe he reunited with the eagles in 93 94 for their hell freezes over after the the gap there um their first song back with him was love will keep us alive and then following September 11th, their Hole in the World song, I think is great. Mm. I yeah. think that's a great... It's a good one. A great bring back. Um, other appearances, he was in Blues Brothers, also in RoboCop. Um, he was in RoboCop? He was in RoboCop. Weird. Also in the Drew Carey show, which we talked yes. about with her. Oh, one of I love favorites. it so much. It's, it's good. He goes, uh, there's a line, we're talking about him like sort of playing a character behind the eight ball a little bit. And we, we talked before about his, like he was a member of Drew Carey's band on sure. the Drew Carey show. And there's a hilarious scene where they try out a bunch of other guitarists and none of them are good enough, but they're like, it's like Johnny Lang and slash and, uh, uh, uh Dave Mustaine. And you know, they're like, you don't have to be nervous. You don't have to play so fast, you know, whatever. <laughs> and Joe Walsh ends up being the last guy. And they, they take him because he, uh, he seems he's not too good. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. He, like he's, he's not going to, he's not, he's gonna not steal gonna, the show. Yeah. He's not going to make them look bad. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why they choose him. But there's like, you know, and he plays the same character. He basically plays himself, himself. Yeah. Uh, as just kind of a burned out old rocker. And you know, like there's a great line about they're at a hotel playing a gig, like inside the hotel and they tell everybody, you know, we got to clear out the pool. Uh, you know, there's been like a kid had an accident in the pool or something like that, you know? And he just like deadpan straight go, goes like, Oh man, a drink out of that pool. Like it's <laughs> just, that's just what he, I don't know. <laughs> in February of 2012, he closed out the Grammys with Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen and Dave Grohl. Have you seen that guitar? No, solo I have section? not. It has some of my favorite things ever. What Actually, song? I don't remember the song, okay. but, um, but with McCartney and Joe Walsh, and it has my absolute least favorite guitar solo ever <laughs> by Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh, Me and my wife come were, on now. Uh, then wife were dating and watching it live, and she knows that I can't stand Dave Grohl. Wait, you said then wife. You said oh, me and my, my then wife, wife were dating. Now wife. Yes. Then girlfriend. Yes, JP didn't get a divorce since last week. That's right. No, yeah. we're good. My now wife, then girlfriend. There you go. We're watching that Grammys and uh, she knows my distaste for Dave Grohl already. Really? Oh, I can't stand Dave Grohl. Oh, we're going to have to do a side conversation on this. Oh man, he's up in my not like list. Uh, wow. And then he did that <laughs> and I was like, and that's a reason why. So if you guys want to go see why I don't like Dave Grohl and why I like Joe Walsh, <laughs> then go watch the 2012 closeout of the Grammys. It's awesome. Interesting. Um, one other Joe Walsh story in 94... Uh, well, he dealt with drugs and alcohol most of his life, but in 94, he blacked out on a plane, and he woke up in Paris with his passport in his hand, but he never remembered even getting on the plane. Wow. And he's been sober since then, so that was like the breaking point. I mean... If I woke up in Paris with my passport, 
I'd probably wonder how I yeah. probably stop that stuff too. So <laughs> it freaked him out. So. That was what ninety four. Is that what he said? Wow, so he's man. been sober since ninety four. Um, good for you. Uh, yeah, good job. Jimmy Page's number one sunburst, his uh, 1959 Gibson Les Paul, was actually given to him by Joe Walsh. Really? So he gave him that guitar. And Pete Townsend's Gretsch 6120 that he uses in Who's Next and Quadrophenia was also given to him by Joe Walsh. What a guy. So Heart of gold, that Joe Walsh. One of my favorite guitars, uh, Ibanez S Classic, was given to me by by Rob Alley. True. So there you go. Guitarists helping others. Yay. Yay. We're a community. We love people. And Joe Walsh still to this day uses a Marshall 50-watt Plexi. Like, that's his amp. Really? Yeah, just a little 50-watt. Like something you could carry with he's you. He's not one of your, he's not like Eric Johnson. No, as Tone far as, Master. Yeah, like, you know, he's just plug it in and whatever he's you like, got. like, I'll play a Telly. That's fine. Yeah. I'll play a Strat. I'll play a Les Paul. Yeah, whatever. Just give it to me. I'll play a Squire. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Give me that. Yeah. I'll just play a first act. Just plug it in. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. Yes. I don't really care. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to play sloppy anyway. What's yep. it matter? You know, <laughs> why, why do I care how the action on this guitar is set? Why do I, you know, yeah. I'm just going <laughs> to. I'll tune it. I'll tune it, yeah. Um, Joe Vitale, we talked a little bit about on drums, see above. Um, Willie Weeks on bass. Great play- name. Great name. Played with Clapton for the Crossroads Festival. Studio musician with George Harrison, David Bowie, Donny Hathaway, and Randy Newman. And you're like, why did you mention Donny Hathaway in the middle of that great selection <laughs> of of musical acts? It's because my favorite thing ever is of Willie Weeks is he does this three and a half minute bass solo on a song called Voice Inside on a Donny Hathaway live project. If you get a chance to check it out, it's awesome. Nice. Bass players, there's your side side listen. Go off and listen to it. It's it's really good. Voice Inside by Donny Hathaway featuring Willie Weeks. What uh, do I know Donny Hathaway from? I know the name. What song do I know him from? Uh, Voice Inside <laughs> <laughs> featuring Willie Weeks on okay. bass. Fair enough. I don't know. Uh, Jay Ferguson on keys, played with the band Spirit. Um, no hit- relation to Turd Ferguson. No. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh, Bruce Ritt. Uh, R.I.P. Yeah. Um, you know, what's Norm McDonald. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Norm McDonald, a.k.a. As Bruce. Nope. Uh, as the guy from <laughs> really? Smokey and the Bandit. The guy that just died. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Reynolds. Good heavens. Holy cow, we had a hard time with that. We knew Turk Ferguson. Ferguson out yeah, the top. Yeah. It's a funny hat. An oversized hat. <laughs> um, Jay Ferguson on keys. Played with the band Spirit. Their hit, I Got a Line on You. Another solo hit, Thunder Island. He now does TV and movie scores. His most recognizable, he did the Office score. The oh, really? From the Office. Jay nice. Ferguson on keys. Good job on that. Outstanding. On guitar, the other guitar player, um, if you're going to play op- opposite Joe Walsh, Joey Mercia. Um, BG stuff. Did a lot of stuff with Andy and Barry Gibb. Played with Joe Cocker, um, who we're going to talk about in the future. We're big Joe Cocker fans. He played on the Luxury You Can't Afford album. So I just started looking back at that album. And actually, Phil Driscoll wrote two songs on that album. Outstanding. Boogie Baby and Wasted Years. So Joey on guitar. Uh, backing vocals, a guy named Jody Boyer. Um, another backing vocalist and tambourine player on this track slash album that I want to mention is a guy named William Frank Bill, in quotes, Smizek. Um, and the reason I want to talk about him, he's a 1960 U.S. Navy sonar tech, and he's got a fantastic ear. So no musical training mm. at all, but has a great ear. And he's used as a professional listener like for he had a span really? in his life where he was just a listener he would go in and listen and push bands to their limits and tweak stuff sonic stuff sonic just, stuff, just like frequencies that he's cool. a professional listener with like a perfect ear he did stuff with bb king rick derringer jay giles band bob seeger and most recently well most recently to us dishwalla he did everything on the dishwalla project really right so a professional professional listener, listener. how's that, that for listener <laughs> how's that for a gig how <laughs> Sean Connery oh, was a professional that's... listener. <laughs> Trebek. Hey, another uh, another <laughs> celebrity gentleman. A professional listener, Trebek. <laughs> You'll rue the day you cross me, Trebek. Oh, that's, good. that's good. Sean Connery, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Right. Man, it's been a minute since we've had a, yeah, a yeah. random guest. Yeah, thanks yeah. for stopping in, Sean Connery. Uh, that's the band. Buck Futter. <laughs> <laughs> and we will not bleep that. But we will bleep the V yeah. in Eagles. Yeah. Um, that's that's the band section on this. So. All right, neat neat band. Man, very cool. That my I'm just kind of sitting here in shock at the term professional listener. Like, all right, what a cool thing to like fall into as a career. You can't go to school. I mean, no. you can you can go to school for audio training. You know what I'm saying? But like to just realize, you think he did t- discovered that? Like he's like, you hear that? Somebody? Yeah. Hey, you hear exactly. that? Exactly. I think of what you ever watch that? you ever watch Mash? 
Not much. I'm a huge Chris Lord, okay. big MASH fan. There's a character on MASH called Radar O'Reilly. Okay. And he's based off a real guy. Okay. And, and in the Korean War, he would hear the choppers coming before anybody else. Oh, wow. And so he would go, he would start reacting to these choppers coming. They're going, what's going on? He's like, wait for it. And, you know, a couple seconds oh, later, wow. they'd hear the choppers coming. So he would always warn them about incoming wounded or all this kind of stuff because he had, he had like, you know, uh, you know, bat ears. Supersonic hearing. Yeah. So, I, I, we think of it as cool. It probably drives him up the wall. If you oh, hear well. everything, if I heard every annoying cricket or everything true. like magnified, that would probably drive me batty. Oh yeah. And I guess he probably hears full spectrum. You know, he probably doesn't have any gaps in his frequencies that are damaged in his hearing, sure. that kind of stuff. I wonder why he picked the tambourine to play. Oh gosh. Yeah. The most that annoying. Would be the, I can't stand tambourine in my hearings. I mean, normal. Like, yeah. Like, and that, that frequency will kill your, you know what I'm saying? Like sure. enough. I'm sure he probably Sissy in the hearing. front row of the church. You're welcome, <laughs> but please put down the tambourine. Please. please. Everybody. On. We will hug you. We'll say, Hey, it's good. You brought your tambourine. But we don't mean it. Yeah. No, don't, don't take your tambourines to church. Don't folks. put it, put it back. Don't do it. Like praise him at home. That's right. You know, praise him with the dance. Praise him, praise him in the car. But uh, <laughs> don't. like when you take it to church, it really throws off the team on stage. It, and, and this is a safe space to say that. That's right. That's yeah. good. We're all, it we're makes all friends it hard. here. There's weird acoustics in the room that you aren't thinking about. And you're, you're not in Joe Walsh's band. Yeah, no. <laughs> and you're behind the beat. Don't do it. Yes, you're behind you the beat. You, you can't right. help it. It's not your fault. <laughs> Even if you're on the beat to the people on stage, you're behind the beat and you're dragging them back. Yeah, Just don't do it. That's awesome. Leave your tambourine at home, sis. That's awesome. But you can bring yours, William Frank Bill Schmeisig. Absolutely, yes. Because you can hear perfectly. Yeah, so you probably anticipate you're good. You're fine. You can hear it. Yeah your head oh that's fascinating i'm so glad you i'm so glad you went in depth on him that's awesome no problem um i got a little bit on the equipment that he used i know you yeah oh uh, yeah just a little one piece of equipment the arp odyssey analog synthesizer is what he plays as his keyboard of choice or yeah. his synth of choice same keyboard was used on peter howell's doctor who theme oh okay so the doctor who theme, that's a pretty popular tv show pretty tv theme it's yeah a weird theme yeah. Um, but I, that might segue into a little bit about what you want Absolutely. to talk about. Absolutely. On- okay. So the keyboard part, there's kind of a breakdown in the middle of uh, of the song where it goes to just a keyboard thing. Um, it's kind of like a musical bridge. Yeah. It's like an interlude, you know, that introduces a new section of the song. There's like three or four very distinct sections of this song, and they're all amazing. The my Honestly, my favorite part is in the sort of intro section where the acoustic guitars come in. That just da 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 boom boom, so good, like clean, beautiful, epic, amazing. Um, th- and then there's this really interesting section in the middle where the synthesizer takes over, and it has a really neat sound that leads me to a, a, a very uh, nerdy but fun conversation that I want to have for just a second. So let me play a little bit of this keyboard sound so you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain a little bit about, I want to talk to you about the harmonic series. The harmonic series is, okay, let me explain it like this. When you hear a note, any note of music, within what you're hearing, that that note is comprised of a whole bunch of other notes. It's like when you see light, you're seeing a whole bunch of colors combined into one, and it comes off to you as white light, right? Yellow and blue make green. Yellow and blue make green and red and blue make purple and all that stuff. And they all combine and they make what we would call white light, right? Um, So it's the same with um, musical notes. When you hear this note... Brought my keyboard into the studio today, by the way. Just pulled it out of his pocket. Another first. M Audio Key Station. Rob pulled out of his pocket here. So that's kind of a low note, but if you hear this note... Okay, let me go up an octave here. So if you hear this note, you're actually hearing a series of notes combined that combine to make that one note. And those notes are called the harmonic series and they follow a specific pattern. Uh, Guitar players are probably more predisposed to being able to grab onto the harmonic series because guitar players talk about harmonics. If you've played guitar Um, you may be familiar with the harmonics that exist on your guitar strings. If you cut the string in half, there's a harmonic in the middle at the 12th fret that is an octave above uh, 
um, your, you know, whatever your open note is, right? Um, a lot of people then, tune their guitar with harmonics. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's a harmonic on the seventh fret, the fifth fret, and on further down the neck, um, they get they get shorter and smaller and harder to get to, but they're there, and you can find them if you just sort of graze your finger up and down the neck and, and pick and hear the harmonics come out. So what we have here is a, is a keyboard part that is... There's you hear sort of one note that is staying. It's just going bop 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 bop. But it's also got above that you hear these moving notes that's going bop 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 bop. Right, and uh, within that within that uh, part you hear these. They're called overtones. Overtones are artifacts of the harmonic series. Uh, they're, they're notes of the harmonic series that get emphasized uh, either because of the EQ or, or purposefully on a synth. You could bring out certain elements. On an organ, the, the, uh, the bars, the draw bars on an organ um, are, rep- are made from notes of the harmonic series. And the more you pull out, the fuller your organ sound is because more of those notes are being brought out. Okay, so let me let me try and explain the harmonic series real quickly. When you hear this note, okay, you are actually hearing um, forty nine keys on a piano worth of uh, a span of notes that is forty nine keys wide. You are hearing the root note, an octave above, a fifth above that, the octave again, the third, the fifth. The flat seventh, the octave again, the the ninth, the third, the sharp eleven, the fifth, the sixth or thirteenth, the flat seven, the natural seven, and the last octave. Now your guy's homework is to go home and memorize that, exactly. like Rob did, because yes. that's amazing. So when you when you hear this C, this is what you actually hear all at once. Fantastic. Isn't that insane? That's They're all awesome. present in that one note. So every note you hear, I mean, just think about if you hit a chord, a basic chord that's three notes. Think a about triad, yeah. if you will. A yeah, triad. That's right. You're hearing all those notes I just played plus... T- times three. Like, it's insane. Yeah, so um, it's just crazy to think about. You can also, this is a cool exercise. You can try it at home. I'm going to try it into the mic. I don't know if it will translate. Um... But if you if you make an O shape out of your mouth and and kind of move your tongue around while you're making a sound, you can accentuate different harmonics. You may have even heard this when you brush your teeth. If you shape your mouth differently, it it produces a sound inside your head. I don't know if I'm and the only all one. All you does guys this. out there should brush your teeth. Yeah, absolutely. That's important. We're big advocates of the tooth brushing. Uh, but have you ever done that? You ever like play music in your teeth while you eh, brush? Sorry. Am I the only one? I, I don't <laughs> kind of let out some go secrets here. So like, oh man, I sing, I, I make music while I brush my teeth all the time in my head by ch- You should try it sometime. Change the shape of your mouth and you can do whole melodies <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay. I'll but, try that. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, if you, if you, if you just see if you can hear the harmonics coming out. Okay. I'm going to make a weird sound and change the shape of my mouth and see if you can hear different harmonics coming I'm gonna out. I'm going to go get my toothbrush while he does it. Okay. Here we goes. Do you hear it? Yeah, you can hear it. So, like, I'm keeping the same note, but the but I'm letting different harmonics come okay. in and out as as the mouth, shape of my mouth changes. I don't know if that's going to translate over you your might not be able to speakers speak. on your phone while you're listening on your desk at work. But uh, if you put headphones in, you might be able to hear it. I don't know. Anyway, that's the harmonic series. That's Neat. That was good. Probably that was educational. The nerdiest thing we've ever I talked about on this podcast. That. But there's like three of you out there who are like, "Man, I love it when you guys talk music theory." That was for y'all. That's Everybody good. else, you can skip it. It's that, fine. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. I'm a little wiped out. You got anything else you want to talk about for a uh, second? You know, the only maybe a little bit about the a few of the lines in there I thought were pretty cool. The whole pre-chorus section and the second and third verse is kind of like a call and response pattern. So, like, Joe Walsh does the, you know, lucky I'm sane after all I've been through. And then, you know, Bill's like. Everybody say? Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> professional, uh, professional listener coming yeah. in there. Hey. With everybody say I'm cool. He's 
Uh, that's Jody Boyer, the other backing vocal. Oh, so hey. two little call and responses right there. Um, they say I'm lazy, but it takes all my time. Yeah. And then everybody, everybody say, everybody say, oh yeah. And then Jody with the, uh, oh yeah. Hey, Bill and Jody, thanks hey, for joining guys, us. Thanks. Come in and hang out with us. That's awesome. I thought that's kind of neat. I always like the old that's call and response. Cool. Uh, we should probably talk a little bit about the kind of the theme of the song itself. Yeah. Um, it it is it is uh, satire in its nature. It's not literal, sure, um, but it's a very funny sort of um, poking fun at or a very uh, kind of an ironic look at the life of a rock star. Sure, right. Um, all the lyrics are about I have all this stuff that seems great, but really, like I ha- I have a mansion and but I live in hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got a Maserati that goes 185, yeah. but I lost my license. Yeah, so now and I can't I, drive. Now I don't even drive. Yeah, um, it's just it's just a bunch of like funny little looks at that. I have a you know I have a limo. Uh, I ride in the back and I lock my doors in case somebody tries to attack me. That kind of stuff. Actually, there's a great alternate version of that line on the Eagles' live version of this. So the original lyric is, um, uh, "I have a limo ride in the back." I lock the doors in case I'm attacked. When the Eagles do it live on their live album, he says, uh, I have a limo right in the trunk. I lock the doors in case I get drunk. <laughs> so I guess that's probably af- maybe after he sobered up. That's I don't know good. what year that album came. No, I think it was no, like 1980 was, or yeah, something. So, yeah. Um, but uh, just a funny just a funny line. That's I don't cool. know. Um, but it's just a a kind of satire look at like what people, the things that people fantasize about rock star life, basically going, they're fine. Yeah. It's funny that you use the the line ironic because we were kind of thinking about songs that are comparable, I guess, to this. And I immediately thought of the Alanis Morissette ironic song. Yeah. Uh, It's like, you know, it's like rain on your wedding day or free ride when you already paid that kind of stuff. It's kind of an irony thing. Did you have one? that I did. And this is going to be a little controversial just because of the, just because of the band themselves, but I think the uh, modern day equivalent of this song would be Rockstar by Nickelback. Oh my gosh. Think about it though. Think about it. It's a, um, you know, oh, I want to be a rock star, mm-hmm. right? And sure. it's like, I've, it's all this really the stuff that's and, like greasy and grimy stuff yeah. about being a rock star. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of an ironic satire look at like. It's you not know, all glamorous. And- hey, hey. I want to be a rock star. Anyway, that was not a very good Chad Kroger. Chad Kroger Sorry. did not stop by. No, but he he's did not. not an impersonator. He, he took a poop, and that <laughs> and that poop talked into the microphone. Uh, for a second. Was, um, <laughs> thanks that guy for coming by thanks and for, pretending to be. For, Ch- thanks for plopping by. Uh, thanks for pretending to be Chad Kroger. Um, the line in there, the there's tons of lines in this song. I mean, I guess yeah. we can talk about the lines. The I live in hotels, tear out the walls. That's actually a nod to Keith Moon. Keith Moon. Go ahead. No, you're good. That's- drummer for the Who, yeah. original drummer for the Who, famous like all time famous partier. Sure. Um, they had a great. I remember watching the the Who's behind the music, where uh, my favorite just Im- the image I get of Keith Moon immediately is where he'd punched a hole in a hotel wall or sure. or put a hole in it somehow. Sure. It was a big old hole, and then framed it. Yeah. Like <laughs> he tore the picture out of a picture frame and <laughs> then framed the hole that he had put in the wall. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of Keith Moon in a nutshell. That's awesome. He died young. Yeah, true. He, he, he didn't survive long. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's kind of a poking fun at that kind of like, like everybody who goes, oh, it's so glamorous. You know what I mean? And he's like, I don't sleep at home. You know, like, yeah. okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a nice house, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, they, right. I, it, it literally, I haven't been there. They tell me it's nice. Yeah. You know, whatever. Everybody else enjoys my stuff. I, you know, I'm out here in a hotel room on the road yeah. getting blisters on my fingers. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, um, Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, it's been good so far. This episode's been good so far. I've yeah. enjoyed this. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. It's it's like, you know, all this stuff is going on. But I got to look back at it and say, I'm hashtag blessed. That's what Joe Walsh is saying. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, bless up, fam. I'm, yeah. it, life's been good so far. Yeah. Uh, Joe Fiddler Walsh, by the way. We haven't oh, mentioned Oh, yeah. I didn't touch yet. about that. His I middle know. name is Fiddler. Which, which is, is a, man, that's a money name for awesome. a musician. It sounds like, um, it sounds like the name for like a bluegrass blues player. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's they'd his be like, nickname? Yeah, they'd be yeah. like Guitar Slim. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, They'd yeah. be like, yeah, I'm Fiddler Walsh. Fiddler Walsh. Yeah, yeah that's good. And out here playing some violin blues. Yeah. And... Anyway, that's kind of dumb. Sorry. I, 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 <clears throat> no, I don't want to end on a downer like that. It kind of sucks. Um, 
there's also some just so much to talk about musically on the song like the verses have kind of a reggae feel and we talked way 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 back in season one early season one when we covered some bob marley about the reggae feel where instead of um you know your classic like american pop or even british pop whatever uh western pop you have kick on one and three snare on two and four right in a reggae it gets swapped up and you get uh you get kick on two and four so you're going um you know one boom three boom one boom three boom and that's what we get on the verses of this song it's got a very reggae feel it's all over the place sure. there's no way this song should work mm-hmm. it's got it's Too got this styles. opening Too. straight rock country kind of rip, you know what i mean um and it goes from it goes from uh, the opening riff that's in the key of A to like A major, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's playing an open slide, which is an A major chord, sure. um, and and then it goes to A minor for the verses and C for the chorus. Life spin, so it just keeps swapping around. You know, it transitions back to life's been good to me so far. Back to an A major chord, like it's just you know. All over the place. It's all over the place. There's so much going on. There's these weird interludes with random synthesizers and random acoustic guitars. But it's a journey. The mm-hmm. whole thing is like, it had to be eight minutes long. Sure. You know? <laughs> like, cutting this down to four minutes is probably a real travesty. I hope I never hear it that way. <laughs> uh, because it deserves to be this long. Because if you take out something, it doesn't it doesn't have the same sure. impact. Even at the very, very end, like they're basically in the fade out section. He brings in another hook with these guitars going, bow, 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 this random lead line for no reason. That's awesome. Sure. And it's like, this song is over. We're seven and a half minutes into this thing. And he's like, let me do one more awesome thing. I, I, got, I got thought of something. Yeah, exactly. Hey Bill, listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? And Bill's like two thumbs up, man. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Other good things too that I should have talked on and meet the band. I don't know how I didn't on the album. Guess do you know who all does backing vocals on this? I'll help you. Okay. Don Felder, Glenn Fry, Don Henley, Timothy B. Schmidt. No kidding. Eagles. <laughs> oh, there's a long bleep for oh, you. Oh man. Nice job asking your your new because he recorded this after he joined Eagles. Yeah. So like he he joined Eagles <laughs> and then recorded this album. But you know he's in this band. So you want to include your new friend. Yeah. So they sang some background vocals. Wow, on it. that's so cool. So that's a pretty They're, powerhouse of background vocals. I mean, yeah, it doesn't I mean doesn't get better than Eagles. Eagles. For, yeah. for vocalists. They really soar on vocals. Oh, stop, stop. No. They really no. can spread no. their no. they really have large no. talents. No, no, <laughs> no. America. America. Eagles. That's right. Lee Greenwood, what are you well, doing my here? Goodness. Did you know <laughs> Did you know that if you mention Eagles and, and America, <laughs> Lee, Greenwood Lee Greenwood just shows, shows up. up in your mirror? I dare you say it right now. <laughs> <laughs> he just shows up and you instantly grow. Your beard grows. It increases your beard growth by 50%. That's amazing. Just to say America and Eagles and let Lee Greenwood's presence enter your car. Um, yeah. So I'm not real sure how we got there, but you ever seen the Saturday Night Live? I saw this thing one time about a bunch of, this is totally random. You can go turn the podcast off. We're done. We're, this is bonus time this here. This is okay? us chatting. Yeah, we're in bonus time. Uh, there's, I saw a thing one time about uh, behind the scenes of Saturday Night Live and they were showing like sketches that didn't make it and stuff like sure. that and the, the process of how they make them. Um, and Will Ferrell, uh, he uh, pitched this sketch about Lee Greenwood and how he couldn't like he could only write patriotic songs. Um, and so he was like, he was trying to write other stuff and it just wouldn't come out. Sure. And he's getting frustrated. Right. Uh-huh. So imagine Will Ferrell as Lee Greenwood and they it got all the way to like where they're doing dress rehearsal, that kind yeah. of, you know, thing, but it just didn't make it. Um, and he's going, ah, so frustrated. I can't not write about how much I love America. <laughs> it's like, awesome. That's anyway. So good. Shouts what, out to Lee what's Greenwood. What's the most American thing you've ever done? I'll tell Me? you mine while okay. you think on okay. it. Okay, yeah. So I play guitar for a Spanish church, uh-huh. and uh, this has been several years ago, maybe eight, nine years ago. I played a youth camp 
for a Spanish youth camp. So thousands of, of Spanish kids. And it was 4th of July weekend. And the guy's like, we need to start with the Star Spangled Banner. I feel like we should start this service. So the white guy in the group got to represent America and start the worship service with the Star Spangled with Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. That's the most American thing I've ever done. <laughs> well, okay. So I can't think about maybe the most American thing I've ever done. Nothing just springs to mind. But I can tell you the most thing that was going to be like that for me okay. and epic failed. Sure. Um, my band director in high school uh, was going to let me play the Star Spangled Banner to open a football game okay. uh, on, w- on my guitar. And so I practiced it at home. I had a cool, like, I was going to move into it in the middle of it into, like, taps, like, tribute to the fallen sure. heroes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With harmonics. Oh, like, man. It was, You're you know, prepared. I wasn't, it wasn't like Jimi Hendrix. It was like, it was like, you know, this has got some distortion, but it's reverent. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, uh-huh. so shouts out to the POWs, you know, yeah. all of that, right? And so I'm you so sick. picture psyched. everybody crying. Yeah. So I'm saying, exactly like, this is my moment. I can't just, I was going to absolutely steal the scene, sure. you know, whatever. Um, so we get, we get to the moment, right. And they've, I think they open the football game with prayer uh-huh. and then I'm supposed to do, you know, do this. And so I hit the first note and nothing happens. Oh, nothing no. comes out. My cable went bad or got oh, unplugged or no. something. So absolute silence. And I get, I get. I get a second and a half of leeway and he goes, screw it. And has the band, you know, has the band oh, play it. Cause no. I, there was a time, you know what I'm saying? He's oh, like, yeah. we got, we got dead silence. Yeah, exactly. We got to move on here. So I didn't, I didn't get to do it. Never got a chance oh, to man. do it again. And I thought this is going to be, you know, exactly. Tears are going to be flowing before this football <laughs> game. Um, but so when yeah. we get out of here, we're going to go upstairs and play the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> in <laughs> harmony. We're, Lee, you can come with us, Mr. Greenwood. Yeah, come, come on, on up, come and on, you Lee. can uh, you can sing "God Bless Your Song" behind <laughs> it. So, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. So Absolutely, this, so just we, a little bonus time. Here. We were kind of joking it's about the flow of this, like the flow of this episode, and this is the way Joe Walsh would want this episode to yes. go. Like he would not want it polished. No, uh-uh. he wants us all over the place. Yes, measured sloppiness. So here we is are. What we're going for today. So shouts out to Joe Walsh. Shouts out to Lee Greenwood. That's that's right. Shouts out to Eagles, both uh, animal and musical. And band. And, um, yeah. Shouts out to Don Felder and Phil Kagey and Rick Derringer. Rick Der- who played on yeah. there. And Willie Weeks. That's right. Shouts out to No everybody. shout out to Dave Grohl. No. Yeah. Uh, everybody send us your eating food in a pool pictures. Oh, yeah, that's uh, just, good. You know, we're getting into fall here, but find a pool that's somewhere is still open. Get underwater with some food and send us a picture of it, it at Great Song Pod on Twitter. That's awesome. Follow along. Uh, join our Facebook group, Great Songs and the Great People Who Love Them Greatly. Uh, and uh, we talk about all kinds of random stuff, uh, but always related to good times and good music. And um, Hey, our year anniversary is just around the corner. So oh, be man. Listening. We're coming up a on a year. Isn't that crazy? We're so excited. Time we got, flies. We got good surprises planned for that. So uh, we're coming up on the end of season two. We got some good stuff. We're ramping up. We're not limping into we're the We're not going to coast two. out. No, no, we're no. We're going to no, put no. the pedal to the metal. Absolutely. Life in the fast lane. So Get stay ready. Stay tuned. Tell a friend. Thanks for listening on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, uh, Podcaster, Spotify, Whatever you're listening on, you ever do that thing where you almost, <laughs> almost, almost burp mid word, and so then you have to quite like quiver, quite quaver your voice. What's no. that word? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's get this thing over with, everybody. I'm Rob. I'm JP. Go listen to some music. <laughs>